Welcome back. I told you about Sir Charles Claw. This is the case study, and we'll have a look at this now. Sir Charles Claw has been in the UK for many, many years. He was born in the UK. He has a domicile in the UK, and he's been very successful and made a lot of money. Now, he wants to avoid tax legally. And of course, as a UK domicile, he's taxed on his worldwide assets, of which he has plenty, and he wants to try and avoid that legally. So what he's done is he's moved to the Bahamas. So he's bought a property in the Bahamas, and he has bearer shares. He also has a property in the UK, such as that. It is an old manor house, which he owns, and he also has a thousand acre Norfolk sugar beet farm, which produces sugar for one of the big sugar producers. And he also has a super yacht, which is registered in the Bahamas, but often moored in Monaco, especially during the uh, Grand Prix, where he earns quite a bit of income from the mooring for that week. He also has £250,000 in Coots, the Queen's Bankers in, in London, and he also has a foreign account with US dollars also in Coots in London. He has 300,000 acres of forestry in Norway, and he has a forestry business that is running as a paper mill there. And finally, he lives in the Bahamas, as we said, having bought this lovely property in the Bahamas. Now, when he moved to the Bahamas, he got permanent residence there. He cannot get uh, Bahamian citizenship, but he's got permanent residence. And he put down his re roots there back in 2006. So he's been there quite some su substantial amount of time. time. He doesn't um, come back to the UK other than occasional visits. So he stays within the four, 46 days uh, that he's allowed in the UK. So he will come for board meetings and things like that and then return to the Bahamas. So the property in the Bahamas, now that he has lived in the Bahamas for so long and considers himself to be a domiciled now, of choice in the Bahamas is excluded property. Therefore, it is not taxable for inheritance tax should he die. Going back to the Bahamian property, should he die, of course, Bahamas has no estate duty at all. So that, that is going to be exempt from any Bahamian tax. The Forestry in Norway is exempt because under the rules in the UK, any business anywhere in the world is exempt from inheritance tax under something called the business, business property rules. So his forestry enterprise in Norway is exempt. And Nor Norway got rid of its inheritance tax many years ago, so they don't have inheritance tax either. So his money in Coots, 250,000 is covered by the nil rate band, which I told you about, 325,000. And the 250,000 US dollars is exempt as well, because it is a foreign currency account, which is allowed as an exemption against inheritance tax. His yacht, which is registered in the Bahamas and occasionally goes to Monaco for the Grand Prix to make income from the spectators, that is registered in the Bahamas and therefore that is uh, a excluded property and because it's not in the UK. But remember that if he were to, to sell to the UK and moor his yacht there, it would be 
classed as in the UK and therefore subject to inheritance tax should he die there. But Monaco has tax avoidance rules as well, which will assist him. So should he die, uh, the yacht, depending on where it is, will not be taxable. But if it is in the UK or more there, it would be taxable. We move to the thousand acre Norfolk sugar beet farm. This is run by a manager who is uh, uh, occupying the main farmhouse. So Sir Charles doesn't ever go to the sugar beet farm. It, farm. it is run as a business. But in the UK, we have something called agricultural property relief. If you have a farm anywhere in the UK or in EEA, Europe, then that will be exempt from inheritance tax on, on your death. So he's had that for quite some years and that will be exempt should he die. Now, he also have a, has a mansion uh, in, in the UK and this has a certain rather nice features about it. It has an old historical maze, which is attractive to spectators. And also he has um, he has William Morris wallpaper on the walls in the rooms, which is also very, very great interest to anyone who is interested in that sort of thing. So what he's done is he has got something called conditional exemption relief. And that is because he opens the property up to people during the months of May and June. It will be exempt, conditionally exempt. It is still his property, but it's conditionally exempt from inheritance tax. So situated in the UK, but exempt. He also has some bearer shares. Well, you may well know that bearer shares are no longer tradable. It was the golden, uh, golden gem in the crown of tax avoidance. Most countries now following an OECD uh, re review have stated that um, bearer shares were used for tax avoidance and money laundering and therefore uh, they will not be possible to be exchanged as they once were, i.e. the bearer has the value wherever the bearer shares are. So he had some bearer shares in the Isle of Man, the UK's offshore tax haven, and they now have been transferred into ordinary shares, which of course in his company that he's running very successfully now is a business and therefore will be exempt from inheritance tax. So we have the agricultural, agricultural property relief, which applies to uh, agricultural farms, etc. in UK and Europe, but the businesses applies worldwide. So if you have a business anywhere in the world, it will be exempt from tax. Now, when you look back on it, there are quite a few assets here. So the planning has been put forward by his advisors and he, with each asset he buys, it, they, they, they look at the situation and see if it is exempt from inheritance tax. If it's not, then they will obviously do something about it. So living in the Bahamas now, he should be exempt from inheritance tax. Now, I'll just mention here the case of Richard Burton, the Welsh actor. The Welsh actor moved to Switzerland and um, he was going to try and avoid tax that way. But when he died, he was buried with the Welsh flag draped over his coffin and a copy of uh, Dylan Thomas's uh, poems in his coffin. And the revenue said, well, he still had a, a, an attachment to Wales and therefore he had not given up his connections, emotional or, or physical, to the UK and therefore they would charge him estate duty at that time. So one has to be very careful about what one does to change one's domicile. Now, just to convince you that possibly the UK does encourage tax avoidance, well, 
many years ago, this will be 2016, the European Parliament came out and said that free ports in, free ports in Europe were used as money laundering and tax avoidance and therefore anyone any European country would be restricted on free ports. Now what happened was we had Brexit and the UK left Europe and now in 2022 we have introduced legislation that encourages people to open up in the UK's free ports of which there are many and there are many benefits to actually opening up a free port in the UK, which is exempt from many things such as business reliefs, um, NIC, uh, etc. So although we've now left it, the European, we don't ad adhere to any of their requirements anymore. So free ports are the new tax avoidance scheme that we have in this country. So that I will wind up now and thank you very much for your attention and 